Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to the course of Digital Signal Processing. Today we will start chapter number 4, lecture number 5. And in this lecture we will talk about sampling of continuous time signals. So let's get started. So in today's lecture we will talk about periodic sampling and we will look into the frequency domain representation of periodic sampling. As in previous slide we have talked about the periodic sampling that discrete time sequence that is x of n can be obtained from continuous time signal x c of t according to the relationship given in equation 1. So here x c of t is the continuous time signal and we replace this small t with n t. Here n is the sequence number and t is the sampling period or sampling time. The values are of n are from minus infinity to infinity. Here 1 by t the reciprocal of sampling time is basically sampling frequency which is in samples per second and omega s which is in radian per second so both of these are sampling frequencies one is in sample per second and other is in samples radians per second so when we go in frequency domain we will talk about this omega s so this is capital omega s this one is capital omega s and omega s is equal to 2 pi by t okay so radian per second so this is the representation of ideal continuous to discrete time converter so you have x e of t continuous time signal then we have converted c to d that is continuous to discrete time converter and we are giving it the value of sampling period and from this we are getting this relationship so this is continuous time signal of 32 milliseconds and we are sem we have sampled this with some time period and after that we have so many samples there are 256 samples okay so this is known as periodic sampling in which our sampling period remains fixed so we sample the signal for one single time period okay so we use multiple nt nt means for example, n start from 0, so first sample will be at 0 t, uh, next sample will be 1 t, the next sample 2 t, so multiple of sampling time. So if t is 1, so first sample will be at 0, next will be at 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So in practical, we achieve sampling with the help of A to D converters, analog to digital converters. C to D converter is exactly the same thing as A to D, but A to D converter also includes quantization, which C to D converter doesn't include. Okay, so C to D converter is almost similar to A to D converter, but it does not have quantization, it just has sampling. The first thing that you need to remember in periodic sampling is that the sampling process is not invertible that you cannot go from x of n to x c of t by using the same method okay so we have to do something else in order to get continuous time signal from discrete time signal okay now the sampling process is basically two stage as you can see here this is stage one this is stage two so it's a two stage process stage one and stage two okay so in first stage you can see that we are multiplying two signals s of t and x c of t x c of t is our continuous time signal and s of t is a periodic impulse train so s of t is periodic impulse strain so if we are multiplying two signals in time domain we call it impulse strain modulation multiplication of two signals in time domain is usually known as modulation okay now once we multiply impulse strain impulse strain is just like periodic impulses so this is impulse strain 0 t minus t so we we'll multiply this periodic impulse strain with x c of t signal and what we get x s of t which is this thing we get this thing now this x s of t has information of time what we do in next stage we convert these impulses to discrete 
so that what we get x of n so there are two stages in first stage we do modulation in second stage we extract the value of time or we convert these impulses to sequence we convert impulses to sequence okay so let's move on to next slide so here there are two examples of sampling with two different sampling rates you can see that impulse train sampling so what happens here this is continuous time signal and we are multiplying this continuous time signal with periodic impulse train so every periodic impulse train has unit area under the curve so if you multiply unit area under the curve with any signals you will get these impulses okay so the area of the impulses will change so this is how what you get after impulse train modulation this is the signal that you get after impulse train modulation so here you can see that the gap between 0 and t t and 2t is fixed and the gap is very small so it means that sampling time is small and when the sampling time is small it means that sampling frequency is big okay sampling frequency is high here you can see that the sampling period is very high when the sampling period is quite high it means sampling frequency is low because we have a relationship t is equal to 1 by f or f is equal to 1 by t so here the t is equal to t1 so our sampling time is t1 here the sampling time is twice this one okay so this is our these impulses are our sampled impulses so once we extract the information of this t once we extract the information of t it means that we are converting impulses to discrete time sequence so first of all in first state what we do we can we multiply x c of t with s of t okay this is periodic impulse train this is continuous time signal but we get x s of t okay now from x s of t which is sampled impulses we extract the information of sampling time and what we get x of n okay so let's move on to next slide and see the mathematics of periodic impulse train so before moving on to the mathematics of periodic impulse train here we are discussing the difference between sampled impulses and x of n okay so x s of t is continuous time while x of n is discrete time so these are sampled impulses but they are in continuous time while x of n is discrete time x s of t includes time information as i have told you in previous slide while x of n does not have any time information it just have sequence number the samples of x s of t are represented as the area of impulses while those of x of n are finite number so impulses this impulse represent area under the curve whereas this impulse represent finite number let's say one its area under the curve is one here the amplitude is one okay let's move on to next slide so in this slide we will talk about the frequency domain representation of sampling which we have discussed previously why we want to represent the sampling in frequency domain because we need to know what is the adequate sampling time what is the minimum frequency sampling frequency so here's the same block diagram so this is our discrete time segment which we get after modulating continuous time signal with periodic impulse train but we get in first stages sampled impulses so these sampled impulses still have the timing information so what we do in next stage we just convert the impulse train to sequence so this is our continuous time signal this is our periodic impulse train so you know that delta of t is just one impulse at zero but when we say t minus nt so here n is missing n is equal to minus infinity to infinity so if n is if n is zero we will have impulse at zero if n is one we will have impulse at t if n is two we will have impulse at two t like the way if we have n is equal to minus one we will have impulse at minus t if we have n is equal to minus two we will have impulse at minus two t 
so with the help of n we are adding all the impulses okay so here we are multiplying or modulating so just substituting the value of impulse train and then continuous time signal so you know that whenever we have impulses and we are multiplying them with continuous signals so we'll have the con we will have the impulses with area under the curve of continuous time signals so we have shifting property so if there is an impulse at t naught we will have the signal at t naught so phi of t naught delta of t minus t naught so if we solve this we have impulse so if the impulse is defined at nt we will have the signal value of nt okay because impulses are defined at multiple of sampling time so if we multiply that impulse with continuous time signal so we are going to get the same impulse we are going to get the impulse at nt but with area under the curve of continuous time signal so let's move on to next slide so here we will talk about the representation of signals in frequency domain so conversion from xc of t to x s of t this this is like the first stage so in first stage we get this sampled impulses which is in continuous time so if i take the continuous time for your transform of this signal i get x s of g omega this capital omega is basically the continuous frequency so we know that small angular frequency is equal to capital omega into t this is the relationship between discrete angular frequency and continuous angular frequency so if i have the continuous signal and i take this continuous time Fourier transform i get x c of g omega and likewise if i have the periodic impulse train and if i take the for your transform of this signal it will become s g omega now the thing is that i can have any type of continuous strike signal it can be sinusoidal it can be any random signal but periodic impulse strain will always remain periodic impulse strain so what you need to do you need to take the Fourier transform of periodic impulse strain and it will always remain fixed so we need a periodic impulse strain and we have to multiply or modulate it with continuous time signal so in previous lecture i've told you about the Fourier transform of periodic impulse strain the Fourier transform of periodic impulse strain is periodic impulse strain but with the amplitude of or the area under the curve of 2 pi by t so you will have periodic impulse strain 2 pi by t so now this will be omega axis 2 pi by t so for example k is 0 so you will have impulse at 0 next impulse will be at omega s next impulse will be at so it will be like this thing 0 omega s 2s omega minus omega s so now you will have impulses in frequency domain so we will call multiple of sampling frequency before that we have impulses in time domain now we will have impulses in frequency domain okay so it's very simple uh, if you still want an explanation i can give it to you so you need to represent because this is a periodic signal you need to represent this signal in four year series form okay so if you represent this signal in Fourier series form, you will get the coefficient a0, a1 up, up to a n 1 by 2, 1 by t. Okay. Now you have the coefficient. Now you have to convert this impulse to frequency domain. So if you convert impulse to frequency domain, you will have 2 pi delta of omega. Okay so the Fourier transform of one impulse is one but if you have one in frequency domain you will have two pi delta of omega okay so this is the relationship that you need to understand so anyways 
the Fourier transform of periodic impulse train is periodic impulse train but in frequency domain. So this is the mathematics which will remain fixed for periodic impulse train. Okay. I have shared a slide with you in which you can see how we can drive this thing. So this is just like delta of t, but here we have delta of omega. It means that now we have excess omega, and this is multiple of. Why I'm saying multiple because cave can have values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 1, minus 2, and we have multiple omega s. So let's move on to the next. So here you can see that this was in time domain. So we are modulating two signal in time domain. So what happens in frequency domain? X C of T is the continuous signal. So whatever the continuous signal is, we will take its Fourier transform. So we are generally representing that it is like X C of J omega. And the Fourier transform of this is X S J omega. So, because now we are frequency domain, we have to convolve these two signals. Okay, we have to convolve these signals. And 1 by 2 pi is because of the periodicity. So, we have to convolve this over a period. Okay, so I don't know about like this XC of J omega, but I do know about this periodic impulse chain. So, I know that the mathematics of like I can write here 1 by 2 pi. I don't know about xc g omega. It can be any signal. And then I know about this 2 pi by t as we have drive in previous slide omega minus k omega s. Okay, k is equal to minus infinity to 2 infinity. So if you simplify it, 2 pi will cancel with 2 pi. So we will have 1 by t. Here it is. Then we have summation. We have summation. Now, these are just the impulses omega k minus omega ks. Okay. So these are just the impulses. These are just impulses at omega s to omega s zero minus omega s. Okay. So these are just the impulses at omega axis. So if these um, impulses are defined at 0, omega s, 2 omega s, it means that we will have copies of this spectrum x c g omega at this point. So how we can write this x c g omega that this signal will appear at multiple of sampling frequencies. Okay. Now if I go through this point that is mentioned below. So equation 5 shows the relationship between Fourier transform of input and output of stage 1. So this is the stage 1 output and these are the inputs. So this is the relation between stage 1 input and output. Fourier transform of output consists of periodically repeated copies of Fourier transform of input. So xc of t was the input its Fourier transform is x c omega so what will happen if I convolve this with periodic impulse train I will have the copies of this x c omega at multiple of sampling frequency with the amplitude of 1 by t each copy is shifted by integer multiple of sampling frequency so obviously k will be minus k starts from minus infinity to infinity so if I start like k start from minus 1 We'll have minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, likewise minus 2, minus 3. So k can have any value between minus infinity and 1. So each copy is shifted by integer multiple of sampling and then superimposed on each other. Okay. So in next slide, we will have an example of this. So by looking at the example, the thing will be clearer. So here's the frequency domain representation of sampling. This is the Fourier transform of any band limited signal. Why we are saying this is a band Fourier transform of any band limited signal? We know that x c of t is the continuous time signal. So this is the Fourier transform of any random band limited signal. Why we are saying it band limited? Because above omega n, the amplitude is zero and beyond minus omega n at zero it is defined between only minus omega n and omega n so this is a band limited signal so this is the Fourier transform 
of x c of t this is the Fourier transform of periodic impulse and you can see that 0 omega s 2 omega s 3 omega s and this keep on going and the amplitude of this or the area under the curve of each impulse is 2 pi by t if I convolve these two what will happen this copy will appear at 0 this copy will appear at omega s this will appear at 2 omega s and this will appear at omega s like the way minus omega s so same thing will appear now so the replica is appearing at multiple of simply frequency so we can so the first case is when omega s is greater than 2 times the omega n so here's the omega n whatever the value of omega n is if we take omega s greater than 2 times the omega n we will have such thing these copies will not mix the replica of x c j omega do not overlap so this is the replica this is the replica these are not overlapping because we have omega s greater than 2 omega n. well let's say the value of omega n is 10 okay omega n is 10 and i take let's say omega s 30 omega s is what omega n is 10 and omega s is 30 obviously 30 is three times greater than 10 so i can the minimum requirement is two times but i have taken like three times so if omega s is 30 so now this is important to know that if i'm just showing you if the first copy appears at 0 this will appear at 10 this will appear at minus 10 okay now the next copy will appear at this point is 30 because we have taken omega as 30 now if the center point we are shifting the center point to 30 the upper point will move to omega n plus omega s this point this point will be omega s plus omega n so 30 plus 10 40 and this point will be omega s minus omega n so this point will be 20 so we can see that there is a gap between these two copies like the way everywhere there will be a gap okay so if i talk about like next copy for example if i talk about this copy so this will be 60 because 2 omega s 60 then omega n this will be 70 and this will be 50 so what you have to do you have to move the center point you have to move the center point the center point if this is at 2 omega s you have to move the center point so if center point is 2 omega s the upper point will be 2 omega s plus omega n the lower point will be 2 omega s minus omega n okay so the replicas do not overlap as you can see here when the replicas of six x u omega added together they remain a replica of x u omega at each integer multiple of omega s so we have seen that each integer multiple of omega s there is a replica at 0 at omega s at 2 omega s 3 omega s and so on minus omega s 2 omega s x e of t can be recovered from x s of t with an ideal low pass filter we can recover this signal this signal can be recovered because after sampling we have this thing but we can get this with the help of low pass low pass filter so here the figure a is spectrum of original signal figure b is spectrum of sampling function figure c is spectrum of sample signal with this condition okay now one thing is not shown here we will see in next slide when omega s is less than 2 omega this is known as nyquist criteria this is known as nyquist criteria so in this we have omega s greater than 2 omega in next slide we will see when omega s is not greater than 2 omega 
So this is an example in which we have the case when omega s is less than 2 omega n. So this is the same spectrum. This is the continuous time signal with amplitude 1. These are the periodic impulses in frequency domain as you can see here omega x is. These are the impulses with area 2 pi by t as I have shown you in the formula omega s 2 omega s 3 omega s multiple of sampling frequency this is sampling frequency radian per second 2 omega s 3 omega s when we do not have this criteria fulfilled the replicas the, here you can see the replica is overlapping the replica is overlapping and add it together x c g omega is no longer recoverable we cannot recover this signal from this from this I cannot recover this okay when I apply a low pass filter here I cannot I can never get this XCG Omega okay so let's take a value and I can explain with the help of value before I can explain the reconstructed signal XR is an ELIS of the original signal ELIS means that the copies are mixed up okay there exists aliasing distortion we say that there is an aliasing why there is an aliasing because the signal is under sampled down sampled okay so and let's take omega s omega n is equal to 10 as we have taken in previous so this will be 10 this will be minus 10 so if i take omega s is equal to let's say 15 so two times of omega n is 20 at least 20 but I've taken 15 okay so what will happen if the first copy appears here if the first copy appears here the upper point will be 10 the lower point will be minus 10 now the second copy is appearing here okay so I'm going to draw it here the second copy center will be at omega s what's the value of omega s it's 15 so if center is 15 upper will be omega s plus omega n so this will be 25 the lower will be omega s minus omega n so this will be 5 so obviously these copies will mix up so here you can see that this is omega s so this is 15 this is 30 and this point is becoming 5 okay this point is becoming fine whereas this second first copy is at this is at 10 so these copies are mixing up these copies are mixing up so let me make a clear picture for you so the first copy points will be like this is first copy let's say i'm just going for zero this will be 10 this will be minus 10 and you you must need to understand when the when the amplitude of x is 1 and the amplitude of this is 2 pi by t the amplitude of the final sampled impulse will be 1 by t but if this is 5 you will have 5 by t so keep in mind this thing so I'll, so we were talking about the copies so it will look like this okay and I will try my best to label it down this is 0 this is 5 this is 10 this is 15 and this point is 25 like the way this point is minus 5 this is minus 10 this is minus 15 and this is minus 25 so the copies are getting mixes together so we cannot recover anything beyond this thing we can only recover so this is shown here that this is not recoverable portion because here there is a mixing okay so same thing is that what you have to do it's very simple if the impulse is 0 the copy will appear here if the om, omega s 
what you have to do you have to make the center point omega s the upper point will become omega s plus omega n and the lower point will become omega s minus omega n okay so this is how you can you can put the values and you can find out whether the copies are mixing or not okay so let's move on to next slide in this slide we will talk about the recovery of continuous time signal so we are recovering x c of t from sampled impulses so case one is that when nyquist criteria is fulfilled so what you have to do you have to use a low pass filter and the low pass filter here is represented by h r g omega it means reconstruction filter in frequency domain with a gain of t so here is the reconstruction filter you can see here the gain of this filter is t and the cutoff frequency this is omega c this is minus omega c the cutoff frequency is always greater than omega n so the cutoff frequency is greater than this and it is always less than the first copy that is omega s minus omega n so this is the range of the cutoff frequency or oh, you can also take omega c is equal to half of the sampling frequency you can also take cutoff frequency like this okay so why i'm taking this cutoff frequency so these are the copies as we have seen in previous slide this is first copy second copy second copy so in this omega s is greater than omega n so if you see our original signal was this after sampling we have copies so we want to recover only this signal so we will have a filter in which we do not want this copy so cutoff frequency should be less than this omega s minus omega n cutoff frequency should be less than this but it should be greater than this so that we can have complete copy so if i apply so if just a minute so if i pass this signal through this filter i will have only this thing so this is recovered signal so exact recovery of continuous time signal from its samples using using what using reconstruction filter so you can have exactly the original signal that was sampled so this is this is unsampled this is what you get after sampling this is reconstruction filter and this is reconstructed signal so xc x periodic impulse train this is modulation first stage sampled impulses and if you pass sampled impulses to reconstruction filter you have recovered signal okay so this is continuous angular frequency so the signal still is in continuous angular frequencies okay let's move on to next slide so again the same thing just a little bit uh, mathematical expression that recovered signal in frequency domain x r g omega is equal to sampled impulses in frequency domain and this filter okay and the filter range the filter cutoff frequency is should be greater than omega n should be less than the first copy or you can simply take omega s by 2 as the cutoff frequency so if omega s is greater than 2 omega n and we apply a low pass filter with gain t and cutoff frequency omega c the recovered signal is always equal to the original signal so this is the sample signal this is the reconstruction filter and this is the recovered signal okay whereas in the second case if we try to recover the original spectrum of the continuous time signal but sampling frequency is not greater than two times the omega n it is less than two omega n we will have aliasing and we can never have recovered signal is equal to original signal original spectrum because we have seen that the copies were getting mixed we have something like this okay we have something like this so if i apply filter if i apply filter we will have something like this this will be the recovered signal 
which is not correct okay which is not correct we need to have so in this slide there is an example of cos omega naught t we know that if i take the fourier transform of cos omega naught t we will have two impulses one will be at omega naught the other will be at minus omega naught with area under the curve of pi and pi so this is the continuous time signal fourier transform xc of t cos omega naught t the fourier transform of this is this so next what we have to do we have to convolve this uh, with periodic impulse train so this is the condition that is given to us so if i simplify it it says 2 omega naught should be less than omega s in other words omega s should be greater than 2 omega naught so condition is fulfilled it means that nyquist criteria is fulfilled okay so after so we'll have periodic impulse train i can draw it here periodic impulse train zero omega s sorry zero omega s two omega s minus omega s and the amplitude area under the curve of all this is two pi by t this is omega this is s of j omega so you have to convolve this signal with this so you will get this signal okay you will get this so you can see here we have omega naught omega naught we again have so the negative is represented with dotted and the other one is represented with solid line so if we have this condition there is omega naught less than omega s by 2 it means that Nyquist criteria is fulfilled or if we have omega naught is equal to omega s by 2 omega naught is equal to omega s by 2 it still means that omega s is 2 times the omega naught okay so in this case if you sample it and then we have applying a here we are applying a reconstruction filter that dotted line this one is reconstruction filter so if we apply reconstruction filter we will have again the same thing there is no aliasing okay the copies are not getting mixed because we have omega not less than omega s by t or omega not less than pi by t we know that omega s is equal to 2 pi by t omega s is equal to 2 pi by t so divide by 2 but we have 2 gets cancelled with 2 so omega naught less than pi by t so there are many ways to get the same condition true okay so here there is no aliasing and we have accurate reconstruction so let me give an example to you with specific values so it might be easy way to understand okay so let's say that we have omega naught is equal to 5 omega naught is equal to 5 so we have this signal pi pi minus 5 5 and then we have periodic impulse train so let's say our periodic impulse train is let's say i take omega s is equal to 15 so 2 times 5 is 10 and 15 is obviously greater than 2 times so the periodic impulse train will be 2 pi by t here here so this is 0 this is 15 this is minus 15 and this is keep on going okay negative and positive side so if i convolve these two i know that there is a periodic convolution so first copy will be at zero if i convolve this impulse with this signal i will have zero five minus five okay then if i convolve this i will have 15 
20 and 10 okay and if I convolve this one with this so center point will move to minus 15 I will have minus 10 and I cannot write here so this will be minus 20 this point will be at minus 20 and the center one will be minus 15 so if you apply reconstruction filter you have to apply the reconstruction at half of the sampling so sampling frequency here was 15 okay sampling frequency was 15 so half of the 15 is 7.5 so if I apply a filter here so 7 points will be here somewhere so I will have only this signal because this is 10 this is minus 10 so 7.5 will be here so after reconstruction I will get this thing okay but the amplitude of the reconstruction signal will be pi because the amplitude of these impulses was pi by t here you can see that pi by t because this is the amplitude of the original signal and after convolution we get 1 by t so pi into 1 by t is pi by t and once we apply the reconstruction filter the amplitude of reconstruction filter is t so pi by t into t we get the original amplitude so this happens when we have omega naught less than omega s by t or omega naught less than 2 pi by t so let's move on to next okay so here's the same example as we have discussed previously now in this example the condition is reversed omega naught is less than omega s by 2 or omega naught is greater than pi by t both are same if we solve them it is 2 omega naught less than omega s which means that omega s is less than 2 omega naught it means that we will have aliasing the copies will not be recovered properly and if I simply substitute we know that omega s is equal to 2 pi by t less than 2 omega naught so this get cancelled with this one omega t is less than omega naught or omega naught is less than pi by t so here's this sorry omega naught should be greater than so here's the condition for aliasing here's the condition for aliasing here's the condition for aliasing. in all these conditions we are violating the Nyquist criteria okay and now if I talk about the Fourier transform so I can solve it for you so everybody knows that the Fourier transform of this is this okay so the spectrum of Xc T is Xc G omega so how we can I, if I represent this in the form of Euler, so I have 1 by 2 e raised power j omega naught t plus 1 by 2 e raised power minus j omega naught t. And I know that the Fourier transform of e raised power j omega naught t is 2 pi delta of omega minus omega naught. So 2 gets cancelled with 2, so we left with pi delta of omega minus omega naught, which is this thing. And for this rest of the part, the Fourier transform will be plus 1 by 2, 2 pi delta of omega plus omega naught. 2 gets cancelled with 2, so we are left with this pi delta of omega plus omega naught. So if I put minus omega naught instead of omega, this becomes 0, so this is this. Okay. Now if I talk about the aliasing i have to show you aliasing how these copies get mixed so you can see here we have minus omega naught with dotted and then we have omega naught with dash so if we recover i must need to have omega naught and i need to have dotted at minus omega naught but here we are getting this solid at omega s minus omega naught and this dotted at omega s minus omega naught which is not our required so recovered is not equal to the original signal so i am going to show it with the help of some discrete num proper numbers because this might be difficult for you to understand so let's take some numbers and do it so 
let's say that omega naught is omega naught is 5 and we take omega s is equal to 8 so obviously omega s is not greater 2 times the omega naught okay so condition is violating here so this point will be at 5 this point will be at minus 5 so first of all i'm going to draw s j omega okay so this i'm just going to draw three copies so this is periodic impulse strain so the amplitude or the area under the curve is 2 pi by t so this is 8 this is 16 this is minus sorry um, i made a mistake the first will be at 0 the next will be at 8 and this will be at minus 8 okay so if you need the next copy it will be at 16 and this will be at minus 16 so if so i have to convolve now these two okay so if i convolve these two first zero will be convolved with this then eight and then so on so i'm going to convolve zero so once i'm going to convolve zero with this so what will happen what will happen this is dotted okay this is solid so the center of one with zero this impulse will be multiplied with this and this so i have one at five the other one will be at minus five okay now i have to convolve this eight so the center point will be moved to eight when center point is moved to eight the upper one will be at 13 and the lower one will be at eight minus five it means three so the upper copy will be here this dotted will be at 3 and this will be at 8 okay likewise if I do it for minus 8 the center point will have to move to minus 8 the upper will move to minus 3 and the lower will move to minus 13 it's just like omega naught sorry omega s minus omega naught so omega s is minus omega s plus omega naught so minus omega s means minus 8 plus 5 so it is minus 3 the other one is minus omega s minus omega naught so if you solve this this will become minus 13 okay so it means this will be at the solid line will be here i do not have space here but this will be minus 3 minus 3 and then dotted will be at minus 13 okay so if i recover you know that i have to apply the filter at half of the sampling so if i have omega s by 2 is the cutoff frequency so in previous slide we have omega s 8 to 8 by 2 is equal to 4 so if, if i apply cutoff frequency of 4 I will have a filter like this minus 4 and 4 so whatever is coming in between so we know that there will be a solid line that is coming in between and then we have a dotted line okay so this point was 3 and this point was minus 3 okay so this 3 represent omega s minus omega naught and this point was representing minus omega s plus omega naught so omega s was 8 8 minus 5 3 and minus 8 plus 5 minus 3 so we saw that originally we have this thing originally we have dotted line at 5 and then we have solid line at 5 but because of under sampling what we are recovering is different form what we have actual so this was the case of under sampling so in this slide we are talking about the Nyquist sampling theorem so we are talking about whenever we have accurate sampling 
so we can have accurate sampling and accurate reconstruction when the Nyquist criteria is fulfilled that is omega s should be equal to 2 omega t or omega s is greater than 2 omega n so this is the Nyquist criteria and then the signal need to be band limited it means that the spectrum must need to be zero outside some maximum frequency so if this is the spectrum we can see if this is omega naught omega n this is minus omega n so spectrum this is zero this is zero so it says that spectrum of continuous time signal should be zero for omega these are omega axis if omega gets greater than omega n, it should be zero so it means that we need to have certain points in between spectrum is defined beyond this point the spectrum must need to be zero and we can do x accurate reconstruction x c t is uniquely determined by its samples if we have this condition number seven omega n is referred to nyquist frequency and 2 omega n is referred to nyquist rate so spectrum should be zero beyond nyquist frequency and if sampling frequency is twice the nyquist frequency we will have accurate re reconstruction physical meaning of nyquist theorem is that to recover x c of t from its samples if you have these samples and you want to recover continuous time signal there must be at least two samples present within each cycle okay let's move on to next slide so in this slide we will talk about the discrete Fourier transform so far we have continuous Fourier transform x s of g omega so we know that ultimately we have to represent the Fourier transform of x of n so what we have to do we have to take the Fourier transform of equation number three equation number three is nothing but just the sampled impulses in time domain x s of t is equal to summation x c of n t delta of t minus n t okay and then this is from n is equal to minus infinity to infinity if I take the Fourier transform of this product impulse and this is x s g omega some same summation x c of n t then this shifting will be replaced by exponential and then we know that this relationship is between discrete and continuous signal then if I replace x of n here and we know that small omega is equal to what capital omega t so this omega t becomes small omega we have x of n so this is the formula for your transform discrete for your transform it means that i can convert x of s to discrete for your transform so what you need to do if i evaluate omega is equal to omega t i will have discrete for your transform so what you need to do this is the copies of x e g omega that we were getting before this is exactly same thing if i write x s j omega i can also write x e raised power j omega t so we have 1 by t that was the scaling then summation and then all the copies all you need to do you need to replace omega t with small omega okay so it means that wherever we have omega we have to replace omega with omega t so this is the relationship wherever you have this capital omega you have to replace this with omega t so in short if i say you discrete for your transform is nothing but it's just the time scaled version of continuous for your transform this might be clear with the help of example uh, all i want to show you is that currently i have x j omega which is the continuous Fourier transform i have to convert this to x e raised to j omega 
So for converting to x j e raised for j omega, what you need to do? You need to scale the frequencies. Let's move on to next slide. Expressing x e raised for j omega, which is the discrete Fourier transform and offered signal x of n. In terms of x s j omega, which is what? The Fourier transform of x s of t, which is at first stage. This one, this is at second stage. This is at first stage. So x e raised to the omega is the frequency scaled version of x s of t, as I've told you, and the scaling is defined as this. So what is the take home? X c of t can be uniquely determined by its samples x of n if we have this condition. Sampling frequency should be equal to 2 pi by t, or should be greater than half of the uh, twice the Nyquist. The Fourier transform of output of the sampler, the first stage, consists of periodically repeated and amplitude scaled replicas of Fourier transform of input. So whatever the input is, if we do sampling, what we will have? We will have copies of this original. So these are the replicas of input. And obviously there is some scaling, so 1 by t after some scaling. So that's the take home. So now what I expect from you is to open your books and go through section 2.0 to 2.2 of the Oppenheim book that is discrete time signal processing. So if you have any question you can ask me in next lecture obviously like if you open the book you will see many things over there and things will get clear to you. And please practice this problem 4.1, 4.4, 4.8 and 4.2. 11. So, practice this problem 4.1 to 4.4 and 4.8 to 4.11. It will help you understand the process of sampling, discrete Fourier transform, continuous Fourier transform, band limited signal, under sampling, aliasing, all these. Thank you very much.